Okay, just to get some um, whatever maintenance out of the way to begin with, uh, the next two weeks I marked that we're going to skip to avoid holiday travel issues and all that. And so our next meeting after this will be on January 6th. Um, again, with the strangeness of this club, what will we cover? I don't know. Um, we should probably decide that before we go. Um, Looking at the things that I had kind of had to skip for logical reasons, I, th I think the like package setup stuff is probably the best place to go next because um, a lot of the GitHub things reference when you're working in a package. And so I'm skipping those because it doesn't make any sense to talk about them without having a package to, to talk about. Um, and so I think I think that's probably where we'll go next. So um, I'll just say that let's let's do the package setup section next, and everyone you know read these, assuming that's what we're going to work in. Um, it's a lot, so we might end up breaking it up into two weeks or something. But um, let's let's focus there. Uh, this book club is weird, and so we will have <laughs> confusion about that from time to time of what makes sense to go to next. Um, like like I found when working on these, uh, like I'm covering GitHub, but I've got the uh, sign-up sheet and I've got this um, list of the functions broken down by which section they're in. And I'm going through, or I've been going through and kind of flagging, well, these ones have more to do with packages than they have to do with GitHub per se. And so I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about those ones. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about specifically today, um, the pull request helpers and the kind of generic GitHub functions, starting with create from GitHub. Um, and we'll see where we get, um, and we'll go from there. So, all right, um, that does not go there. All right, the first thing I wanted to talk about, um, I can't remember, yeah, this is in the reference. This is uh, the help file, for the function create from GitHub. Um, this is like the first thing I do for almost anything I'm working on. Um, the almost is the asterisk on that is if you're starting a new package, this is, that'd be the one time you don't use this and that's gonna be probably what we talk about next time. Um, but this is basically, you tell it what you want to copy. So what, you know, a package that you want to work on that exists on GitHub. Um, oh, and sorry, I just saw that Jack uh, volunteered to, to do the package setup. So yes, absolutely. Um, sign up for that, Jack, and we will see you in three weeks with that. Um, sorry, so create from GitHub. Um, this is the repo spec is, you know, like uh, if you're working with one of our book clubs, that would be r4ds slash book club hyphen R4DS, for example, if you're reading R for data science. Um, we have a whole bunch of different repositories that we have. And then what this function does is figures out what all has to happen. Um, if you don't have right access to the repo that you're trying to copy, it will make your own copy on GitHub. That's called a fork. Uh, and then it'll download that fork to your local machine and create a project for that. Um, for that package or that that repository, whatever it might be, package or other thing, um, you can explicitly tell it where to do it. That's this like dester. You can tell it whether or not to fork. Um, you can tell it whether uh, what was the R Studio? That's um, whether to initiate a project, whether to open in a new session, um, what protocol to use, etc. You know all these things you can set, but uh, I never do. I just say, okay, I want to create from from GitHub uh, our lib uh, slash use this if you want to make your own copy of use this to to work on um, or create from GitHub, you know, whatever you might want to do. And then it just figures everything out. It creates a destination directory that fits uh, into your um, system. It it's copies or it makes a fork if you don't have right access. Otherwise, it doesn't make a fork. It does all these things. And so um, I like this one a lot. I like that it just kind of figures it out. 
I can often tell when people don't use this and then try to submit a change for one of the book clubs because something goes wrong because they didn't have it set up quite right. Um, and so this kind of just takes care of that. Um, yeah, they've got some, some examples. You can, um, you know, you can use private uh, GitHub um, enterprise instances. You can be more specific about the URL, whatever, but, you know, this format is what I do uh, often. And sometimes, like, let's say, I don't know, I'll, I'll have um, something happens locally that my local copy of a repository gets something wrong with it. I just delete the directory and call this again, and it'll figure out. And, and sometimes I'll even like go to GitHub, delete my fork. Like, let's start from zero. Let's nuke everything that I have. Um, and it just fixes it. So I like this function a lot. Uh, it It's really, once you're set up with all the stuff we talked about last week with making sure that your GitHub is ready to go, it just kind of works. And that's nice. Oh, did anyone have any thoughts or experiences with this? <laughs> Has anyone used it or not? Okay. I, I really recommend if you do any other book clubs with R4DS, just use this. Uh, use create from GitHub. Uh, and then it would be the first part is R4DS and then it's book club hyphen, whatever the name of the book club is. Um, I should pull that up. Um, we have this uh, setup thing that we talk through most of the stuff that we talked about last week. Um, so that takes you through to, you know, getting all set up to use GitHub, like we talked about. And then it says, you know, and now go do create from GitHub for whatever book club you're doing. And so let's say we're doing, like I said, R4DS. The instructions here tell you to do that setup thing that I just showed and then create from GitHub this book club. Um, so anytime you're doing it, this will tell you that. And actually, we're going to go through some of the other stuff here that's in these instructions um, today. But very useful function. So would you, you'd recommend this over like Git clone from the terminal and stuff? Absolutely. Because it also like it does that, but it also does all the R Studio steps to make sure that your project is set up. Um, mm -hmm. It figures out whether you should have forked or not. Because every once in a while, I have um, like tried to clone something directly and then realized, oh wait, I I can't edit that, so it doesn't do me any good to have just a local copy of their repository. Um, it's just I I I think it's especially if you're working mostly with R um, or purely with R, it's very useful. If you're mixing between like R and other languages, maybe less so, but honestly, even like I've had things where I'm just editing a GitHub action and I use this to set it up. And then, um, uh, yes, and I will share the uh, setup link. Um, it just, it sets everything up so cleanly. I am a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. Quick, quick question, if I may, um, what yeah. if, um, you're pulling a course from, from a GitHub repository, <laughs> would it be better to use, use course or to use this? I, I presume like this, if you're going to be a contributor, whereas use course is maybe if you're going to be a consumer of the course. Yeah. Um, I actually like, I, or I didn't dig into the use course uh, documentation. Um, actually, I think it's short. So let's just talk about it here. Um, so there's use zip, which is a specific thing. And then um, I can't, re I don't remember what use course does exactly. Have you used use course? I, um, I have not. I was just kind of looking at the on my way to finding the the <laughs> the, the article page. I saw that and the bu thought bubbled to my mind. Yeah, I think use course. Um, yeah, it's like more specifically for the um, our studio workshops that they host. Um, oh, and I think it. Yeah, it does a little bit. That's. I think this is the main thing actually. Is 
it's not necessarily given to you as a repo. It like could be a short link or something. And then that short link points to a repo and use course is better at kind of figuring out, oh, that's where that goes. Um, Got it. I, I, I think I would only use use course if someone told me to use use course. Otherwise, I would always use uh, create from GitHub. I, I think under the hood, uh, it is basically just create from GitHub. Um, I'm, I, I'm not sharing the window where I'm looking, but I'm trying to look real quick. Uh, it, yeah, it does like a normalized user or um, it's not really create from GitHub. It's doing its own thing, but um, it's doing the same kind of thing as create from GitHub. I don't think it actually, um, yeah, it doesn't really care whether it's GitHub with use course. It, it's just, hey, there's a bunch of files here and I will download them and put them into your uh, target. Um, and it automatically figures out the target. So uh, like, I think it's more flexible, but also that means you only use it in specific instances where it's something set up to use it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it'll do, you know, like download the source from CRAN by pointing to a certain location, or you can do all these different things. But I would always just do uh, use or not. I guess, yeah, the main thing is it's not going to fork. It's definitely, you know, it's only going to download. And I say I would definitely use it, but I could, I've been looking at these simultaneously with like reading these functions. I've been working on some stuff for Tidy Tuesday of setting up uh, automatic tweets so that uh, when I'm on the road next week, it'll automatically tweet the new Tidy Tuesday um, and Toot and LinkedIn and whatever, ideally. Um, and I realized while working on this that, oh, some of the things that I kind of manually sorted out, use this could have just done for me. So um, this is another case where I could see maybe downloading like a directory within Tidy Tuesday, you could just use use this to do that. Um, so it's a good question. I hadn't dug into use course, but it looks like it's uh, a more, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess learning to use it could be useful because like this URL I'm pointing you at, download it. So get all the stuff that is there. And there are various ways you might use that. Um, like I said, grabbing all the stuff from Tidy Tuesday, I could see that being useful. Um, I might have to play with that. All right. So once you have uh, a local uh, package, or not necessarily package, so this is this is aimed at talking about packages, but it doesn't have to be packages. It's any uh, GitHub repository that you have a local copy of. Uh, for example, a um, book down site that we are using for uh, for notes. Like we aren't using that for this club, but for all the other book actual book book clubs, we have uh, book down sites that are kind of like our packages, but not exactly. So if we've already done the create from GitHub, um, this, and sorry, this is the article uh, pull request helpers, which kind of, it, it combines all of the different PR functions within use this um, and kind of walks you through how to use them. Um, they do a good job in this of starting with defining, okay, wh what the heck is a pull request? Um, I don't remember if I had talked about that last week, but in any case, we'll do it again if so. Um, in GitHub, like if you have a local copy of something, you take that local copy and then you push it to your uh, your fork that you can write to. Um, and then you'll ask someone to pull it from your fork into the main branch or into wherever they're working. So the, the term pull request is uh, what is used to talk about where you want someone to pull it from your copy to their copy. Um, that gets abbreviated to PR very often. So um, as we go through this, we will, you know, these are called the, well, it's pull request helpers here, but it's all the PR functions. Um, and so it's just saying, hey, I did this thing. Um, 
merge it, you know, I'd like you to merge it into the main thing, please. Uh, and so th this whole article is talking about the contributor, which would be like you most, well, I guess you could be either of these roles, but you start <laughs> usually in a contributor role and then a reviewer, someone who is uh, doing the actual pull from your code into their code. Um, these functions are great. They, again, kind of like the create from GitHub, you can do all this stuff even through like the RStudio UI and, um, or, or you can do it from command line, but the PR functions help make sure that you don't skip steps. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is, this goes into a little bit of the, the setup stuff that we talked about before, but we can, we can skip all that and it's got the create from GitHub. All right, we did, we've done that. Um, and then what you do is if you wanna start working on something, a, a good practice is to create a branch for whatever you're gonna work on. Again, a branch is a, um, uh, how can I define this without using the word branch, but it's a, a version of the repository uh, that is set up with a name and it's a thing that get, is good at that you can just, you can create a new branch and let's say you decide, oh, all this work I've done is useless. You can kill that branch and it won't like break anything. Um, and so that's why working in a branch is usually a good practice because then whatever thing you're working on, let's say you need to go use the package that you've been working on or, or you realize there's a typo that's kind of more high priority you can leave the branch you're working on, fix that typo, submit that pull request, and then come back to the bigger thing you're working on. Um, so, so yeah, so the first thing they say to do is this PR init, and you give it a name. You don't actually need the branch equals. If you just say PR init formidable, uh, that will initialize a branch uh, with the formidable or with the name formidable. I can't remember if... Uh, PR, yeah, PR init only has that one um, argument. This name could be whatever you want. I think technically there are probably limits on GitHub, like, you know, might have like a 255 character limit or something. I don't know. Um, and actually, I guess that's a Git limit, not a GitHub limit. Um, but, you know, name it something that makes sense to you. Um, I don't actually know if it can have spaces. Uh, it probably can now, but um, and this have spaces. I'm typing that in, and uh, it cannot. Uh, uh, so it says it's not valid if you try to do that. So there is that limit that it can't have spaces in it, but I. Um, the nice thing is it gave me an error. It didn't like break. It didn't create a bad branch or something. Um, so yeah, that's where, again, these functions are useful because they'll figure out all the underlying things that need to be checked to do it. So, all right, so we've created this branch. They're talking about I've, you're creating a branch in order to add um, a certain adjective to this praise package is their example that they're using. Um, and they intentionally put in a typo but they, they do this, create a branch thing. Um, and then they, uh, using the RStudio UI, they add that and put a commit message and say commit. Okay, and they're gonna go. Uh, and then they will submit the pull request. And that's this PR push function. So if we look at the PR push, it doesn't have any arguments. Um, it is just uh, going to, work with you. Uh, it's going to do some things in, in our studio, and then it's going to open your browser and uh, to the page on GitHub where you can actually create the pull request. And so on that page, you have to click, you know, submit. Um, that's this here. You have to create the pull request. You can, um, you know, make sure that you're submitting it to the right place. You can do all of that, but that should all be set up because create from GitHub knows that you want to be doing pull requests to the main, you know, the owner of the repository. So it's set that all up for you. 
Um, oh, that's the thing that I didn't talk about with create from GitHub is it automatically sets the upstream. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in more detail if we have time at the end. But the idea being, it's not um, the origin is like where you copied this thing from. So uh, if you have your copy of, um, let's say, use this. The origin for that would be your personal um, GitHub account slash use this. The upstream is you go up from there into the rlib use that or rlib GitHub account. So like um, we go here, this would be the upstream that you want to point at if you're trying to edit use this and create from GitHub automatically sets that up. And so that way when you do these pr things it it knows that oh i want to create a pull request that's from my branch into the main uh the upstream version of the package um because usually you know it doesn't do any good if you're just creating pull requests into your own copy uh you want to be creating them into the main thing all right so we've done this and now we're going to change like perspective and we're going to be, oh, uh, actually, no, we're not changing perspective yet. We're doing the this uh, function that I somehow, I don't know, I read about it and forgot it exists, that there's this um, PR view. Uh, you can tell it an exact number, but it also will automatically just go with whatever you're looking at locally. And it opens up your browser to that pull request. Uh, this is definitely useful to me because often I'll be reviewing someone's pull request and like, oh, oops, I closed that window. Where Where is that on GitHub? You can just type this in and it'll take from my R Studio to the actual thing where I can actually submit my review and you know merge it or whatever. So PR view, um, I like. Also, if you're working locally um, and you don't have the browser window open where you created the pull request, you can use PR view to go back there really easily. Um, Technically, you can use the arguments, but again, I um, I think most of the time you're going to want to view the one that has to do with what you're looking at locally. So, um, all right, so that's that. Then now we're going to switch modes into the reviewer. Um, you can review purely on uh, GitHub, um, and uh, in this case, they did review purely on GitHub. They saw that there was a change to be made. So that's the interaction that's happening here. And they go back to our studio, make the change and PR push again to update it. Um, I am bad about remembering to use PR push after the first time, but the thing that's useful about it is that it will always check to make sure nothing has changed on GitHub since the last time you pushed. And that's again, like the source of all headaches with Git is um, that some two different people made changes at the same time to something and one branch doesn't have that change, something like that. The PR push just makes sure, if you constantly use PR push, uh, use this will make sure that everything you're working on is up to date and, and walk you through if it's not. If, if you've got a conflict with some other version, it'll say, ooh, um, this thing changed on GitHub since you last submitted a change. Uh, and I can't figure out how to fix it, but these lines are where the error is. So, um, you know, go fix those. So again, you can just click this, the push button in our studio, but I recommend, and, and I'm trying to get better about using PR push all the time. Um, I wish, like, I wish I could just rewire this button and I'll have to see, I'll bet actually with the our studio API package, it might be possible to do that. Um, because it should always do PR push. It shouldn't just push. Um, almost always, at least. All right. Um, and then the other thing that they go into is from the reviewer side, that's the, this brown. You can use this PR fetch function, um, which I think, again, only has, oh, it does have this target um, argument, which is whether you want the uh, uh, the primary repo, which is you know your version of the repo or the source, the upstream version. Um, in context, like I've never had to specify this because um, like you PR fetch, you generally you want the 
the actual, the real, well, I don't even know if it makes sense because you don't have pull requests in your own branch. Um, I've never had to specify that, but I, I guess with PR view, it's possible you would have to with PR finish, which we'll talk about in a minute. Well, it's possible you'd have to. I've never, I have never specified those, but the number um, I've done all the time and that you just get from the UI of the pull request you're looking at. And so you say, okay, I want number 90 and it'll pull that uh, pull request down to your local computer. So if someone else has made a change, it'll check out their branch or their, uh, it'll make a, a clone of their repository on your local computer and it'll pull their branch down. And then you have their version of it to look at on your local computer. So you can go through and edit the code or view the code. You can see why something's not working or whether it's working, make your own changes. And then you can PR push that back up and it'll, you know, any changes you made will be in there. All of this stuff makes a lot more sense. Like as you work with it, for sure. Like if you haven't worked with Git or GitHub, these don't necessarily make sense, but they're, um, I, I don't know. I used to do all of this stuff without these functions and uh, it, every issue that I ever had by doing that, they deal with. So like, I, I have tried to get very much more in the habit of working with them. And the PR fetch is really great because you can use that to, like I use that all the time when someone is submitting something to one of the book clubs and we have um, a thing where on GitHub, it'll automatically build the notes that everyone shares for the book clubs. And sometimes the notes fail to build and it gives me an error message, but it might be you know, really vague. And so I can pull the fetch or I can fetch their pull request to my machine and try to build the book locally and see why it's not working. Um, Cause often the error messages are better, uh, you know, it, when I'm working with it more directly or I can try, oh, it's because this package wasn't installed. I can just add that to the description and then make it work. So PR fetch is really useful, um, PR push, is uh, again to go back up. And then the, the final one that's really, again, really handy is PR finish. Um, like, so once the pull request has been merged, this PR finish looks at your local copy, looks at the version that's on GitHub and says, oh, okay, your local copy um, is uh, uh, done. Like you're, you're done working with that, it's been merged. It'll ask you whether you want to delete it and you say, yes, I do, that's okay. And then it deletes your, your local um, branch because that branch has been merged. You don't need it anymore um, and cleans everything up. If like this line here is the reviewer had this extra remote of the person who submitted the thing, they don't need that remote anymore. Um, remote means just you know uh, a thing on GitHub a version of this uh, repository that's on GitHub. I don't need Mine's version. So um, I can clear that out. Uh, and that clears it, you know, that finishes everything up. Um, and then you can do um, PR pull to, to make sure uh, everything is up to date. I often will just hit the pull button in, in our studio at that point. I don't actually use PR pull usually, and it just kind of makes sure that everything has synced, everything's deleted that should be deleted. Um, everything is clean. Uh, and I, uh, oh, and this is, sorry, this is the contributor can then also do the PR finish to clean up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the whole PR process. I know I went through that part of this pretty, Fast. Did anyone have any questions? Want to go back over anything? Want to talk about anything? Yeah. Have you used GitHub de Desktop, John? Because I'd never used it before. And then a team member um, who used it instead of the like terminal suggested that a few of us try it out. And it also is really good at preventing basically every problem you'll kind of <laughs> find with Git. Um, I have. I, so I used to work almost purely on a remote server. Um, 
I don't work at that job anymore, so I don't have that situation. So I might have to check out uh, GitHub Desktop again. Um, I haven't, I don't know, I haven't had a, a reason to work with it, but it, I think it is that because I use all the use this stuff, I don't, mm -hmm. if you don't already use the use this stuff, or if you work with things that aren't R, um, that would be cases where that's probably very useful. Yeah, I, I was kind of asking if you do if you use GitHub Desktop and then move to this because like there were extra things this did kind of thing. Um, the the main thing is just that uh, I stay in our studio this way, and so yeah, um, that's that's really all. Um, so that it it's updating the R Studio, you know, my R Studio session, um, and it's it's switching me to that branch in the RStudio UI. So I guess that's a thing that the desktop version is not necessarily going to do. Um, and it's just, oh, you don't yeah, need to switch back and out. forth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's doing all of the, and I think it combines more steps than the desktop tends to do. Um, yeah, I think, well, we I think it's something to, for me personally, just to recommend <laughs> as like junior staff members and people that come in to learn, right? Rather than use the command line, they should get used to use this. Yeah, I would I would start with use this and then, you know, every once in a while, like every once in a while, I'll manage to screw something up where I um, make some changes and check them in and then realize that I'm on the wrong branch. Um, and I want to roll those changes back and, uh, you know, do something. And then uh, as far as I know, use this doesn't have anything yet to help with that. Um, was it like to, to fix merge conflicts or? or to specifically to like undo a uh, commit. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like go back to a which, different hat or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, reset. Uh, whatever. There's a, there is a command. I Google it every time. And, yeah. You um, revert normally, right? Yeah. And so I want to reset head. Um, that like I do that. I don't know. Once every few months, I have to deal with that. And again, Google just kind of takes care of that for me. That's the only thing that I ha I've had to do like command line in in GitHub. And again, I say have to, that's just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm in a branch, so I could, I'd be okay if I wanted to, but, um, or I could just try to commit it to main and then it'll tell me, oh, you need to do this. So like it, it will help me in that situation usually, but um, that's the only thing, like that's the, the only time I use command line that I can think of. Um, I, and I guess sometimes dealing with merge conflicts, but um, use this will tell you a merge conflict is like when you have a change that doesn't make sense with whatever has changed in the remote version. Um, use this will tell you, or I'm not sure if it's use this or just like our studio um, will kind of tell you where to look uh, and help you with that. Um, but every once in a while I've had to use a uh, command line for that. Um, yeah. It's, it's, so this, this kind of blocks you from working on main and pushing to main. Did you say, cause that's it, it, feature. it doesn't, it doesn't stop it, but it may, if you're in the habit, it becomes much less likely. Yeah. Cause um, that, that's really annoying when you give yourself yeah. a bunch of conflicts because you were just being lazy or whatever. <laughs> yes. And so, so, you know, you want to combine it with, on GitHub, you can, uh, as the owner of, of a repository, you can just block uh, people from writing to main. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you are in the habit of using PR init, that helps because you don't get a push button on a branch until you do PR push. Like the RStudio UI doesn't have a push button until um until you're ready for it basically and so it kind of it stops you from doing things wrong and if you never use the um the push like if you always use the commands you can't accidentally push because it won't like let you do it um the one thing i do still occasionally uh check something in on main and that's the one that I need to like go back and roll out and, oh, wait, no, I wanted a branch for this. Um, 
but yeah, I, I managed to do that quite often. Yeah. Well, one way I've cut back on that. Let me see if I can um, share. Uh, I, I need to check if there's anything that shouldn't be shared in this file. No. All right. So I'm gonna. Um, I'll just copy paste. There is this package called prompt. And I have this in my, uh, if you do, so first edit our profile from use this and then paste this. Um, what that does is my, um, uh, in my uh, console in our studio, it shows this, for example. Um, so it shows what branch I'm in and the time. So that's what this prompt thing is doing. It's not perfect. Like the prompt package can't always get information about what branch you're in. But generally, if I see main there, I it, it like helps to tell me, oh, wait, don't like, you're not ready to work. You need to create a branch before you do any work. And so then if I do um, a PR init, uh, testing and then I can copy paste what it says and so now after I after I ran that command PR init testing that's what my uh, prompt in our studio looks like and so yeah. it like helps <laughs> helps me keep track of that um, because you know that's the one mistake I make still as you know like I said is is um, uh, merging into main. Uh, excellently. And so now, yeah. um, the one you, thing that we didn't, oh, sorry, oh, go no, ahead. No. Go on, uh, go on. Well, just, um, I was going to kind of move on. So go ahead with what you were going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, you could use this logic, right? If you wanted to rewire the push button or even the PR underscore push function, you could use this just to say like, if like prompt git branch is main, just fire up a warning or stop and say, are you sure you want to push to main or something? It, um yeah it, it, it's it's not even the it's the check-in step and so i need to um see if i can do that in our studio where I just stop it from letting me commit don't let me commit if i'm in main because mm. um because you can always in it you can create your your branch even after you've made some changes and it won't be a big problem but it's when you actually commit them into main that it makes a problem Anyway, it's not not a huge huge problem, but um, yes. So, it, and I, I don't think I would you know prompt get branch underneath the hood is calling one of the functions. I can't remember what it is, but it's calling something out of. Um, it's not calling something from use this, but it's calling something that from one of the get packages that use this uses um, to see what branch you're working in. So, uh, I think actually no, because it's all local. I don't know. Um, it is, yeah, it's just, it's um, looking at some things about your Git setup. Um, yeah, so that's, the, anyway, so that's that's my whole thing is I, I, I am a big believer in these PR functions. Getting in the habit of using them has stopped me from making a lot of mistakes. Um, the, the last few that we haven't, like, that aren't covered in this article, there's PR merge main. Um, it's a little bit kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a overcomplicated name, but it's um, kind of a, a fancier PR pull. Like it figures out where to pull from. So if you're in a fork, it pulls from the upstream master. Um, if you, you know, if, if that doesn't make sense, it pulls from the origin master, but it pulls uh, changes and uh, basically make sure that whatever you're working in is up to date with the main uh, branch that you're working from. So if changes have been made, you can pull those in. Um, this is the point where you might get some merge conflicts, conflicts, but it'll help you through that. Um, and, and this is like PR merge main is happening kind of automatically behind the scenes in a lot of the PR uh, functions because it's making sure that you don't have something that's going to break as you go. Um, and yeah, it says PR pause, like does this. So PR pause is um, 
it takes whatever you're working on it makes sure that that is in sync with the remote of itself and then switches you back to the main branch and pulls the main branch into your main branch um so that you you can use that like i said if you're working on a branch and you go oh i need to make this other change it's higher priority i'm going to pause the pull request that i'm working on um go back to the main branch and then you would do a new pr init to do whatever change you wanted to focus on um and then once you're done with that you can pr resume to go back to uh any work that you have in other pull requests or other other branches um you can uh yeah you can specifically give pr resume uh the name of a branch but um I don't, again i don't think i've ever actually done that because if you just call it it'll say well you have these branches active which one of them do you want um and so that's helpful if you're working on multiple things within one repository um and then the other one that we don't i don't think it's talked about yeah it's not talked about in this article is there's pr forget um that is oh never mind like i just created a testing branch over in uh my other book club repository and i then i called pr forget and it just clears it out it's like i'm like never mind i don't want to work on that um so that's again it's doing a couple of steps just to delete that or probably just really one step to delete that branch but it um takes care of that so it, it clears out uh anything you're working on almost never have you know this isn't something you want to use a lot but if uh you realize that you don't actually want to work on something anymore you can just pr forget it and it'll go back to the main branch and make sure you're all up to sync or up to date and all that um and i think that is all of the pr commands um any questions about any of those so again it's got like all this stuff about the authentication about how to use it they kind of like they repeat themselves a fair amount between here and the um, article, the vignette, but it's because it's useful. Um, and yeah, I love that after all this like really detailed article, they only have the one example um, because they're, it's so esoteric and it's, you know, it depends what you're doing, um, what the examples are. All right. Any other one, one silly question, if I may, John? Um, Go ahead. I, I was I was curious if anyone had used these um, kind of PR commands outside of uh, R Studio, uh, and, and if so, I wondered if they they work as 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 expected. They, I'm thinking in particular about VS Code uh, or some something pseudo IDE like that. Yeah, I um, I've done it. I I think I've done them from the just straight up R console. I think some so some element of them might require the r studio api um I'm not sure um i mean definitely refreshing the interface as you change branches probably that's that's only r studio api yeah i guess it depends on how they've implemented it behind the scenes so it's just like passing curiosity yeah i th think I think everything except it like create from GitHub might not work from um I think I've done that from the um console too. So I think they all work. They might behave slightly differently. Oh, that's actually yeah, because um the I don't think I have it open anymore, but the um create from GitHub has an argument that it, it's like if our studio is available, it'll do X, Y, and Z. Um and so I'm I'm pretty sure they do all work outside of our studio um which is you know would be good <laughs> for if you're switching back and forth it'll kind of take care of everything in whatever context you're in i think i haven't i haven't explicitly done it to remember whether it works um yes technically yeah me no Thing. Yeah. 
trying to get a um, a nice thing to copy paste. I don't have it, so I'll just do. Um, I'm I'm doing a set WD, which is funny because I'm doing the other uh, Jenny Bryan book club where she talks about like you know never do set WD, uh, work with projects instead. Okay, and then if I do uh, PR init testing. Uh, yeah, the, so that worked fine in um, the R, R console, which means it should work in whatever. Um, uh, yeah, and it's, oh, there was nothing to pull from right now. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they all, they all work, or at least some of them work. Um, I haven't tested everything, but it seems, seems to work. Um, Yeah, and um, as Jack says in the chat, I, I would guess there is a fair amount of if interactive, and um, there's also the there's the R Studio API package, um, and R Studio API package has a function that is like um, is available, or is it R Studio is available, something like that. Um, so I'm guessing they're doing a fair number. Yeah, our Studio API is available. Um, and that that will check basically, are you working inside of our studio? If so, I can continue on with these other things. So I'm sure there's a fair amount of that happening. Um, all right. So the other thing I wanted to do today, it's, I mean, it's 11.50, so we'll see. It, um, how much of this we get through, but I'm going to try to kind of blow through the remaining get um, random get things that I don't know. Most of these I've never used, um, so that's why I want to kind of go quickly through them. Be, that I want to have them done. Um, so there's these this pair of functions: use get remote and and get remotes. Um, this is what's used like under the hood if you uh are switching to some other you know if you're doing a pr fetch it's going to use someone else's git remote and so it's going to set that up um you can also just use this git remotes command to report what remotes do you have locally uh it's again it's equivalent to a co terminal command um like if you wanted to set up uh the upstream manually uh that's what use git remote will do but Again, if you use create from GitHub, you don't need use Git remote. Um, I can't think of any time I've used this since I've started using create from GitHub and uh, the PR helpers. Um, but you, you know, it lets you do some more manual uh, changes. You can actually, I'm trying to remember. So one thing you could do is you can have a Git remote with whatever name you want. So origin and upstream are like the standard ones, but I, th I think I did have while I was doing some heavy duty Tidy Tuesday work that I had like uh, Tom Mox remote was set up as a specifically named remote because he had his own version or I don't think it was Tidy Tuesday because he doesn't, he tends to work in the main one, but whatever, where someone else had a remote that I had to reference a fair amount. And so I'd set that up as a um, set remote. That's it. That's the only time I think I've used those. Again, they get called by the other functions. Uh, any, um, and just in general, I'm gonna kind of blow through. So stop me if you want to uh, discuss anything about any of these, And but do feel free to, to stop me. All right, the next one that I'm gonna just barely touch on because we'll go into it a lot more um, when we, deal with readmes and packages, but there's this use git hook. Um, it cracks me up because it's, um, th they, she has all of these different ones that are set up in the package and, you know, like some text that you can run with it. Uh, uh, a git hook is a thing that runs, um, uh, for example, that runs when you're gonna push and just thinking through it right now, I'll bet uh, it, there might be commit hooks. I think there are commit hooks. And so I probably, yeah, pre-commit. I want to set that up to never let me commit to main. Uh, set that up on like all of my repositories. 
I don't want to commit to Maine, uh, almost all of them at least. And then that way it will force you to do the branches. And so actually this is one that I need to, that I'm going to keep open and go into more <laughs> when we're done here. Um, these, this is called by uh, use readme rmd, which is a function that we'll look at with some of the package stuff. Um, and what it does when it's called by that is it sets up a pre-commit hook that says, uh, don't let you commit. I don't remember if it's don't let you commit or don't let you push, but don't let you uh, think that you're done if the RMD version of the readme has changed, but the MD version has not changed. And so it sets that up to make sure that you keep them in sync, um, that you always render the RMD version before you push it up to GitHub. Um, and, but yeah, in theory, I'll have to look into this because I'll bet it can tell me, no, you can't commit to main, John, um, stop trying to do that. And then that would solve that last piece of the puzzle that I need to deal with. So hopefully I will have something in the chat in about a half hour about using that because um, that could be really useful. So um, I have a question about oh, go that. Ahead. Yep. So there are all of these options and thank you for explaining them. Where would you find out more about them? Like so, directly, yeah. From GitHub directly? Um, honest, like these functions, this is one of the functions that's set up to be used in the package and isn't really set up very well to be used normally. The way I'm going to find out about them is by looking at the function itself. So it's, what is it? It's use, okay. use git hook. And it's um, loading from, right? It, yeah, it's project path get hooks, and yeah, it, and so um, there are um, some some like preset. Actually, I think the only preset script that she has is the one for pre commit for um, use uh, uh, use readme rmd. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that, that much about this one yet. I, I like had kind of written it off of, oh no, that's that. We'll talk about it when we talk about readme RMD. And now that I look at it, I'm like, ooh. Um, so the hook names, these are get like git things. So these okay. are the times that the hook can happen. And then the script to run, I'm gonna have to like look at uh, GitHub or I guess it's purely git, not GitHub, but look at the documentation for git and find out what the rules are on these. One thing that I will say to pause on these for a sec is if like when you set up the readme RMD thing, it sets a git hook on your copy, but it doesn't set it on anyone else's. Like if someone clones your thing, they don't have that hook. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, uh, I think it's still open because I had an issue. I was like, you know, is there any way to do that to like share git hooks? And she was like, um, maybe <laughs> you know like normally you don't want to edit someone else's like force yeah. the way that yeah. they work or that kind of thing but um being able to share these things i think it'd be really useful and so this is something i need to learn more about so um, it does say that you have server side hooks if you're working oh. collaborating with other people in an organization um so that i know that's not you're envisioning not the same organization but on a repo but Still, that oh right, that I could see. Um, we could probably do some R for DS hooks. So, um, anyway, something that I need to learn about more. I'm going to try to do because yeah, I only have a few that are really. <laughs> we'll see if they open if they're landmines like this one was. Um, but uh, add code of conduct. I kept this here. Um, this is going to be talked about more with the package stuff, but it is technically a general. GitHub thing that you can set up a, a code of conduct on any repository. And um, it's just good. Like if you are creating a new repository that doesn't have a code of conduct in it, call this command um, and it sets up uh, this uh, contributor covenant code of conduct, which just basically says, you know, don't be a jerk. And the, uh, the contact is an email address for you or whoever you're working with. And so you can put that in the code of conduct and it'll tell them you know, how to contact you. It's just a good thing to do in any repository. So if someone's working on it, 
um, and someone else is like harassing them, they know how to deal with it. So um, I, I think this is a good one to call just basically all the time. You don't need the path argument. It'll put it in the right place 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. So um, it's useful. Uh, not a lot else to say there. Um, <laughs> there's this use GitHub file, and this is the one that, or one of the ones that, uh, as I was working on Tidy Tuesday stuff, I was like, oh, I, I don't think I would use use GitHub file outside of the things that automatically do it within use this. They they do things where it'll copy an action from somewhere or, you know, do, do things like that. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, I am explicitly trying to grab uh, certain files from Tidy Tuesday to do some auto tweet things. Uh, so I need to play around with this and see if it'll work within a GitHub action. Um, but this is just, you know, grabbing the file and dealing with if the um, name of the repo has changed, it'll follow the links to find the file. Uh, so that is helpful. Um, yeah, and then there are some details that you can put in there. But again, it's kind of like, um, it should just work when you're going to use it. And, and the example she gives is use this uh, rlib actions. They have, some, uh, we'll talk about GitHub actions uh, in the package stuff, but they have some standard actions that you might want to uh, uh, deal with or, or copy. And so it copies them down to let you edit them. Um, and yeah, you can do you know, more details on how you save it and all that kind of thing. Again, we'll talk about it more in an application. Um, this one, again, I I wouldn't ever, I don't think I'd ever call it directly. It gets called when you use, um, uh, there's a, a function of like use package down, yeah, use package on GitHub pages. It calls this under the hood. Um, I actually might have a pull request to do because GitHub has updated how GitHub pages work. They have some actions now to make it a lot easier and cleaner. Um, and so, um, sorry, what was the the really helpful to me? Is that about the hooks? Oh, I'm just I actually back in the think chat. the file is because. Oh I, yeah. yeah, I work in an org where frequently I'm trying to share things on GitHub, but. <laughs> just like little useful snippets and other people are not very comfortable. I'm not very comfortable either, but people I work with yeah. are even less comfortable. So like, how do I get this file? And I just like, oh, I just hit raw and copy paste. I'm like, right. oh, no, there's a use this function. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want the so, whole yeah. Info. If you just want one, one RMD I've shared or one R script I've shared. Yeah. Um, and, and like we have some things that are repeated from, uh, you know, club to club or from whatever. Tidy Tuesday to Tidy Tuesday. So grabbing that those files um, could be useful. Um, the use GitHub pages, so they changed the, the actions or not, they, they made some actions specifically for deploying things to GitHub pages. And so I'm guessing, uh, you know, this is doing a bunch of stuff under the hood and uh, doing it the new way would probably be better. Um, and I, I've been updating all of our book club repos to do that. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, everyone realized that throwing around the name, the word master, uh, for everything on GitHub was a bad idea. And so, um, main became the main, the name of main, the main branches instead of master. And very helpfully, Jenny went through and created functions to make it easy to switch from master domain, or if you have a local copy to rediscover that, oh, it's no longer called master, it's now called main, um, or to rename uh, things to main. This is becoming less and less important because now everything just is main. And so you don't have to rediscover it. It just, it was main to begin with and it'll be main going forward. Um, but there are like Tidy Tuesday still uses master because we've got a bunch of internal links that I haven't dealt with yet. Um, but yeah, these functions are just for dealing with that. So if you want to switch from switch the name of your main branch. 
Um, and that's that's all the things that I plan to go through today. Um, oh, and Jack, what, the deploy to branch. I don't. Yeah, you know, so like you're setting up GitHub pages. Say you're making a package and you've used package down build site or your articles and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, if you just use, I think it's the package down, use GitHub pages, you won't have the right branch to deploy properly to GitHub. Um, and then if you use this, what well, you might find, oh, well, what I found, I know that other people had found this too, just from different issues and commit history, is that when you build sites, when you use package down build site, you'll see your changes, you'll see the UI set up all correctly. And then when you go to like do the GitHub actions and look at your site being deployed, then it won't update. But it's because you have to run this function once. Just yeah. like it's a package down function as well. And it creates the branch like GH pages. Um, and I'm gotcha. I mean, I a few hours like wondering why none of my changes work <laughs> until I found this. I I have found for package down, like I um I'm I'm basically uh, I inspired a thing that's going into the R packages book now because I avoided learning package down for, you know, since it came out until a few months ago. Cause I was like, Oh, I don't have time to learn this thing. And then we'll talk, we'll talk about the fun function um, use package down GitHub pages or use GitHub pages package down, whichever it is. And if you just call that, it just does all the things and then package down just works and it just works. Um, and so it was funny, like I was like, I took, I put off learning it and they, they are mentioning in the new version of our packages of like, there is nothing to learn. If you just want to use the baseline, just call this function and you're done. Like that is the only step you need. Um, but if you're doing fancier things, that's where you have to do the deploy to branches. You have to, you know, you might manually set up the pages, um, all those things. Uh, but yeah, it is really kind of astounding to me and we'll talk about that uh in a week or i mean in a few weeks um but yeah it's in um so if we if we jump down to the or uh package where are you um yeah package setup use package on github pages so we'll talk about it in a few weeks but it just like it just works and it's really cool um so and yeah i guess we'll talk about that in a few weeks so i'm gonna stop talking about it that is most of the git stuff like i said i skipped some of it because um it's really specific to packages and so either we'll talk about it you know either um jack will talk about it or we'll talk about it in a future session but i wanted to wait until we had uh some uh uh whatever until we um ha have talked about packages before talking about things like github actions that are specific to packages things like that um yeah all right so i'm gonna um figure out the uh git hook and whether i can prevent myself from pushing to main or checking into main and i will share that in the repo or in the slack channel um and otherwise i will see you all uh on january 6th oh can i ask have, a really basic yeah. question about the pr ones i really only use git through the rstudio ide um yep but where was you just pushed uh there was no commit where did you write your commit message uh, so, so you you do still use or does it uh, oh it pops it up maybe? you still still use the ui for the actual commit oh so, okay i missed that okay yeah yeah I'm sure you so okay. i kind of no okay through it. okay okay yeah, so still use the RStudio ID for the actual commit. And that that is actually a step where I'm like, well, but okay. Know, if there were so you're commands, hitting commit there, but you're just being careful not to hit the push button. Yeah. And see, you uh, don't that's even why... have a push button yet until well, you've once done you the PR push. Up, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's grayed out until you do a PR push because if you if you do PR init, it doesn't connect the um the branch that you make to a remote branch until okay. you're ready um, okay and so yeah anyway yes you still do have to use our studio for the actual commit i mean or use command line okay. um or you can use like i think the one of the 
like the GH package probably has okay. a function for yeah. that, but there isn't a use this for committing yet. And I think, okay. um, I think intentionally because the UI is pretty nice. Like it's good to open the UI and see what has yeah. changed. Like I, yeah. I, it's tempting sometimes to just go, oh, I know what, you know, I changed 10 files yeah. and I know what I did in all of them, but I try to make myself uh, actually look at what changed in each one. Um, it's, you know, it's a good practice because every once in a while you go, oh, wait, wait, what? How did I delete all of that file? Um, that shouldn't have been here. So, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, all right. Then, so yeah, we will reconvene on January 6th. And I will see everyone there. Nice. Bye. Thanks, John. See you. <laughs> Thank oh, you. We, we're You're meeting welcome. tomorrow, right? For DO for DS or? Uh, yes, we are meeting for that um, for different book club. Uh, okay. And then and then that one's off for a couple of weeks, too. <laughs> nice. Well, Merry Christmas to everyone else and see yeah. you in the new year. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. See you next year.